What is going on, everybody in Wrestling Review Society Facebook page, YouTube page, and wherever you're watching tonight? Guys, we have a very special Christmas Eve treat for you. First and foremost, happy holidays. I hope you and your family are safe enjoying this Christmas Eve and uh, have a great Christmas tomorrow. Um, you guys really seem to like this last time we did it when we showed the death match between Zach Monstar and Raven Havoc. So we are going to bring you guys a very special episode of The War Room where we watch this past episode or this past match at Real Pro Wrestling down in Fort Myers, Florida at the Chicago Boys Bar and Grill where Zach Monstar, the reigning defending Real Pro Wrestling hardcore champion, faced off against Bud Heavy in a Chicago street fight. Um, before we get into the interview, or not really the interview, but the watch along, and I bring my guests on, I want to take a chance to plug our amazing sponsors who make this show happen each and every single week. First of which is going to be our newest sponsor, The Coldest Water. Guys, these water bottles are absolutely fantastic. Whether you have a little thirst or a big thirst, they have all the products you need. Um, They're also having a current giveaway. <clears throat> go to the Coldest 60. The link is in the description. Make sure you go to the Coldest 60 and register for the free giveaway. 15 random winners will receive an absolute free water bottle. Now, if you want to get any of their other products like their T-shirts, their athletic wear, their brand new coffee they just sent me, which is absolutely amazing. Make sure you use promo code wrestling at checkout. That is promo code wrestling at checkout to save 10% off your complete order. Also want to give a huge shout out to a rock designs. It's that company custom company. That's been making all those cool wrestling cups you see floating around. So go to the coldest water, get you a water bottle and then send it over to a rock designs to have it completely customized the way you would like it. Also want to give a huge shout out to the company providing this content we're going to be watching tonight, Real Pro Wrestling. I have since partnered with Real Pro Wrestling. I have become the voice of Real Pro Wrestling. That name was given to me, not taken, so leave me alone. I really like it. And you're going to find out why in this match. But, guys, that's enough of me babbling and talking. <clears throat> I want to go ahead and get into bringing my guests on. Um, first, we have the senior official of Real Pro Wrestling. He is the referee who called this match. Um and it wasn't that easy of a job for him because as you're going to see in this match, a lot happens when there are no rules. Um, everybody gets involved, absolute chaos breaks out, and he did a very great job of keeping everybody in line and keeping the match moving forward. At one point, I thought we were going to have to call the match, but he did a really good job at getting control back of the match. So with that being said, our first guest, the senior official of Real Pro Wrestling, Garrett. Garrett, what's going on, man? Same thing, different day. Ready to <laughs> watch these two kill each other again. Yeah, so um, you were right in the middle of it, man. How much of this match do you actually remember? Uh, not a lot. Um, I know at one point um, someone threw me into a lot of glass, and my face still hurts. Um, but other than that, I mean. You know it's bad when the Florida Athletic Commission tells us you have to warn people before this match happens or we are going to fine you. I think the fine was going to be like ten grand if we didn't tell people, hey, there's going to be all this that can possibly happen in this match. You need to back up because the seats come right up to the ring. You're, you're like yeah, right the there. Row. The whole front row moved. And when, when the Florida Athletic Commission called the owners, uh, one is about to come on with us now, but when they called the two owners, they said, look, if you don't tell people this can happen, we're going to fine you about ten grand." So that should put into – perspective just how crazy this match is going to get um but let's bring on one of the people who took part in this match who did some of the let's call it what it is this was labeled a chicago street fight this was a hair shy of a death match and the only reason i say that is because when we see these death matches with zach they they typically have panes of glass and gusset plates those two objects weren't there but a lot of the other objects were so this this was more than a street fight, but just under a death match. It's like that gray area between the two. Would you agree? Yeah. <laughs> it um matches. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and bring on our second guest, the reigning defending hardcore champion. He will be defending his title again at the next real pro wrestling show in Fort Myers, Florida at Chicago boys bar and grill. Make sure you come out and see us, but the hardcore champion himself, ladies and gentlemen, my good friend, Zach Monstar, Zach, what's up, buddy? 
Hello, Clarice. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Garrett. How much do you remember of this match? Everything. <laughs> I find that strangely hard to believe. Nah, uh, you asked me what I had for breakfast. Couldn't tell you. You asked me what happened in my first match. I can tell you everything. So, <laughs> like, I I get re like I just I love wrestling, so I remember it. You know what I mean? So let me let me ask you the question that's kind of the elephant in the room. You know, COVID kind of really took its toll, especially on the state of Florida. I mean, yeah. probably more than almost any other state. Um, and it really took its toll on real pro wrestling. This was your guys' first show back. Did you know mm -hmm. coming back it had to be this just banger that it was? Or did this just happen on its own? Um, Man, I, I knew I wanted to come back hard. Like, people, people, not even wrestlers but or, or fans, but people in general. Man, they love a good comeback story. So I didn't want to just like come in and just like knock on the door and be like, hey, guys, we're back. You should come and check us out. No, I wanted to come in and I wanted to kick that fucking door open and be like, look at us go. Watch what we can do, you know? No, and, you know, from start to finish, I mean, as, as a wrestling fan, you can sit down, you can critique just about anything. You can find issues with just about anything. And that's one of the things you always ask me when we talk about certain matches. What did you hate about it? What didn't you like about it? Because you know I always nitpick. Um, mm -hmm. But overall, it, it was a fantastic show. It was great to see you guys come back in such full force and be able to put on a show so many months later and look like you and your guys haven't missed a step. It was it was, it was was inspirational, and I, I was very glad to be a part of it. You allowed me to be the uh, ring announcer for the show. I will mm -hmm. be the current ring announcer moving forward. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you're actually the one who gave me the name, the voice of real pro wrestling. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> so it's guys, a beautiful voice. <laughs> thank you. Um, guys, we're not going to waste any more of your time. We're going to go ahead and get right into the watch along. You're going to hear the comments of myself, the senior ring official Garrett and the hardcore champion <laughs> himself, Zach Taylor. Just before we start the match, guys, make sure you go to storefrontier.com slash wrestling review society to score all of our amazing merch, like our recently released WRS Club shirt. I didn't want to do wrestling parody shirts, but with everybody copying the NWO logos and putting their own twist on it, I really wanted to do something that said, you know what, wrestling review society is going to stand on their own. And when I think of people like that, I think of the bullet club hints, the WRS club shirt. So go get your guys' shirt, hoodie, long sleeve, short sleeve, whatever you want today. And let's enjoy this absolute banger of a match. Zach leaving this match on the mm -hmm. back side of it. There was a lot of animosity between you and bud heavy. There still clearly is. It, it, it's a, it's a sore subject for you leaving this match, doing everything you guys did. Is there a new respect for each other or do you still just whatever? No, fuck him. Like hands down, dude. Like it doesn't matter how many times I face butt heavy, no matter what the stipulation is, what weird fucking matchup that me and him get thrown into. Like I hate the dude. There, there is no, there is no love loss there. Like I, I don't feel like I respect him any more than I did when I walked into the match. Like at the end of the day, dude, Bud Heavy doesn't belong in my division. That's what it is. I have taken Real Pro from the joke of a hardcore uh, division that it was, and I have turned it into something fantastic. And, you know, Bud had that opportunity, and he dropped the ball with it. And just for that, he doesn't belong. That's, it's, that's the simple fact of it. So I know I said we we're going to get right into the match, but based off your answer, I have one last question. Guys, I promise you the match is coming. I have one more question for you. We hear this all the time. At the end of the day, the job of a professional wrestler is to make sure that themselves and their opponent, you know, come out the same way they went in, all 10 digits, you know, not injured and, and good to go the next match. You guys take care of each other. Was that your mindset going into this match or did you really want to hurt this guy? No, I could give a shit less. If Bud ended up laying in the middle of the ring bleeding out, just further proof that he doesn't belong in my ring. He's he doesn't still belong. A father, Zach. 
He doesn't belong in my division, dude. But he that, wants. That, I, see, I understand. I no. understand the rivalry. No, hold on. I understand the rivalry, but he is still a father. He has children, man. That you have as a as a father yourself, you have to be able to relate to that some way. I think Zach's frozen. I may have made him mad. Garrett, do you do you really believe that this feud is that hate ridden? So it goes back to a lot of things. Like these two have beat the crap out of each other everywhere they've gone. These two can't stand each other. I mean, we've separated them in locker rooms before. So when he says like they hate each other, like he, I'm sure he has worse things to say that he can't say on this podcast. But it goes both ways. You see, I'm, I'm, new, I'm new to real pro wrestling. Zach and I have been friends for a while. Um, but I just got the job as the announcer. I've just gotten involved in the locker room area in the field for everybody. Zach is having some connection issues. He'll be back in just a second, guys. So we're going to wait for him to get back before we start the match. But I, I, I'm new to it, so I don't know the back history of these guys. I don't know everything that they've been through. Kind of give us a rundown while we wait for Zach because I thought it was a work. I thought they were working. We get behind that curtain and – Myself as the ring announcer, if you notice, I never went behind that curtain. I never went into the locker room. That's not my zone. That's not my area. I'm not privileged to that. I'm not one of the wrestlers. I am the ring announcer. I stay in the front. I was pulled to the back by Jonathan and said, we need help getting these two guys apart. And they were literally destroying this place to the point you guys were almost not allowed back at the Chicago Boys Bar and Grill. Yep. Like I said, what, what, you, what started it? Um, there's a lot of things that go back to um so originally his faction known as the house of wolves were the tag team champions frat pack was part of the people that put one person that he calls his brother the shell for months so it goes back to a lot of that that was Almost two years ago, I believe now. So, like, it's, this has been going on for a while. So, at what point did it stop being a work and just become a straight shoot? And like I said, guys, we're just waiting on Zach to come back. We're going to start the match, and you guys will see everything that we're talking about because there are certain points of this match where even I looked at it and said, are these guys still working? Or, or they were throwing some very, very stiff shots. There was even a guy in the crowd who wanted to fight Bud Heavy. No one, no one really likes Bud. He's one of those people that just, you know, he he's a he's an alcoholic. He's a drunk. No one, no one likes him. And you know, you get someone like Zach, who you know is respected in that locker room, you know, and you can see, like, you know, Zach has a business face. He has a personal face. You know, he can make himself so he can be the bigger person. And when it comes to Bud, it is extremely hard for him to do. I've known Zach for going on almost five years now. And, you know, I've never seen this amount of hatred for someone. I didn't know, like, it was truly in him. You know, <laughs> so I don't want to give away – I don't want to give – okay, guys, Zach is back. We're going to pull him up on the screen, and we're going to get right on into the match. Um but I just want to give him one chance to answer the question that I gave him before he left. Zach, as a father, even though you, you don't like Bud Heavy, the things you said about him, you being a father yourself, you have to respect the fact that he's still a father at the end of the day and he has a family to take care of. See, and, and like, I want to respect the fact that, like, he is a father and he has these things to take care of. But let's be honest about this. You know what happens when people can't wrestle? They try to do death matches. That's what it is. And, like, I am a wrestler that loves to do death matches. Like, that's the difference between me and what everybody else is doing right now. And and I stand by that, dude. So when when you're not getting the, the, the notification or the notoriety or, and you're not being praised by the people because you're, you're an outstanding wrestler, don't come knocking on my fucking door trying to be something that you know you can't be. Because at the end of the day, this is the reason why I'm the wood chipper, Kevin. You know, you're not going to get any arguments from me. I, I was telling Garrett while you were getting back in here that I, there were there were times you guys were throwing some really stiff shots. 
I thought you guys may have been, you know, giving receipts. I didn't know that they were this deep seated. We really haven't talked about it much. I wanted the first reaction to be when we watch this. This isn't even up on Real Pro Wrestling's page yet. It's going to be up after the podcast because uh, we really wanted to have the first look feel to this. Um, but while I'm pulling this up and getting everything ready, same question I asked Garrett. When did this go from being a work to being a shoot to you guys just fucking hating each other? Because at one point, you guys didn't have an issue with each other. So I looked up and I realized that the hardcore division was a was a joke, dude. It was horrible. And it was a laughing stock. You have me, who who is an owner, right? Mm-hmm. Doing death matches, leading the hardcore division on the other coast. And I look over and my company is being laughed at because the people who are holding the title are, are doing gags with it and they're making they're having fun and they're doing videos and it's 24 seven rules. And like, it is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. And it made me so visibly sick to my stomach to see bud, even in that, to see people like Ruby flyer to see yeah. that Jordan, that Jordan Owens was holding my hardcore title at one point. Think about that. So I busted my ass. I busted my ass. They asked me, uh, it ended up that I, I earned myself a title shot and I didn't go after the top crown. I didn't go after the coastal. I went after something that needed reckon like to be recognized as an actual legit threat. So I went after the hardcore title. And since then, nobody can touch the division because I'm running the division. Hey, fair enough. I Like I said, I was telling Garrett, I'm very new to Real Pro. Uh, this past show is my first show. Um, and due to COVID, I wasn't able to experience it live. Um, so I didn't know the history between you and Bud. I didn't know that this was a legit blood feud between you guys. Um, so this is all news to me as well. Um, guys, if you could really quick, let me know. Can you see the match on your guys' screen? Yeah. Okay, great. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go and push play on the, on the, um, on the video. We're going to watch the match. Feel free to give your tips and all that stuff. Guys, I do want to remind you that this is not a live broadcast. This is pre-recorded. There is a massive storm going on at my house. So we made the decision to pre-record this just in case things go south. So if you're commenting and we're not replying, we're not ignoring you. We're just not live. So please forgive us for that. We will be live again next Thursday. Um, but with that being said, this is the Hardcore Championship St Chicago Street Fight. Real Pro Wrestling, Bud Heavy versus the champion, Zach Monstar. Guys, feel free to give your comments as the match goes on. Do you guys have audio? Look at this stupid fuck. Zach, can you guys hear the audio? Yeah. Okay, great. Mm. What a good way to get your heat. Like, that's so fantastic. I'm so proud of him. So I've had this problem for a long time, and, you know, the most iconic one's going to be the Sandman in ECW. Why are wrestlers allowed to drink coming to the ring? D that impairs you, and it makes you less safe, especially going into a match like this. Again, like, that's one of those things that, like, people want to be edgy. That's what it is. People want to be edgy. They want to walk out, and they want to flick off the crowd. And, dude... I can go out there. I could be the biggest bad guy in the entire universe. And I don't have to sit there and be like, hey, fuck you. Hey, you're a pussy. And I don't need to sit out here and walk around with a beer flipping people off. Like, All right, let's get back into the match. Look at that ring announcer. <laughs> Are we gonna address the fan who wanted to rush the ring and attack Bud? We will. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. I don't know if the camera catches him or not. Oh. Your hardcore champion, ladies and gentlemen. Damn. 
Now, watch. Now, for those of you who've only seen Zach on this podcast, he's always sitting down. You obviously see the tattoos and piercings, but this man stands six five six six. He is a very intimidating person. I would not want this death match. Um, Zach, let's call it what it is. It was a freaking death match, and you know it. <laughs> it was. It was a death match. And there's Garrett as your senior ring official. Mr. Garrett Heil. Because I at least know how to say his last name. Now, I got to I gotta go ahead and say this. When he spit the beer in your face, I thought you guys were going to start brawling. And I was like, man, I'm not even going to introduce one of my best friends. Like, that was my whole goal for the night was to introduce Zach. And when, they, when he spit the beer, I was like, they're going to start brawling. I'm not going to get to do this. Fuck my night. <laughs> This is the thing. We go back to that six foot two fifty. One fifteen. Yeah. The crowd is already sick of Bud Heavy. It's my favorite sound in the entire universe. Yes, this was my first show. My notes are on my phone. Look at Garrett laughing. This is this is where the fan tried to rush the ring. No. No, that happened after one the... Of them. It was one of them. Oh. I love this. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, that is Zach Monstar's shirt. Let's go and talk about this right now because this has been bothering me since the show. Garrett, you turned off my freaking microphone. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, moving on. That's me. In your hand, Zach. The That's me. Your hand. Let's go, Zach. Monster's going to kill you. Monster's going to kill you. I don't know what I was doing. I think I was stretching. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know what I find very funny is that everybody in that crowd is chanting in Madhouse or Monstar. And if anybody remembers the interview, the first interview I did with Zach, I encourage you to go back and watch it and listen to how hard he had to fight to not only build that brand, but was told time and time again, nobody's going to respect that. And here you have an entire sold out venue of people screaming, Madhouse, Monstar, Monstar is going to kill you. That goes to show anybody trying to be a pro wrestler, anybody trying to develop their character, don't listen to what anybody else says. Take what you know and run with it. Facts, dude. Facts. <laughs> Garrett, you've known Zach for five years and you're still afraid of him. I, I'll give it to you, though. I'll give it to you, though. Zach in the ring and Zach out of the ring are two completely different people. That's a whole ass man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love that little slide out. I don't know why. 
I know I'm supposed to be unbiased as the ring announcer, but I, I couldn't help but chant. My feelings for Bud Heavy. But like. Danny, whoa, it takes a lot of guts to go in there and get Zach Bob Starr in his, in his element. <laughs> I look so unamused. Like I'm just like, let me let me just clasp my hands and get on one knee really quick. Like yeah. uh, I'm over here telling you guys to fight. Oh, a headbutt. You wanted a fight. There you go. Big European uppercut. You know, I'm, like you said, George, oh, wow. I'm sitting here watching this match, and don't get me wrong, I, I absolutely love it, and I'm typically the traditional wrestling fan. Zach, you and guys like you and Raven Havoc have really made me a fan of the deathmatch style. I'm loving the match as it's going on, but I'm just sitting here in such anticipation because I know what's coming, and for all the viewers watching, you're in for a massive, massive treat. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, dude, we had the uh, we had like Gore Myers uh, exactly. build team building fucking instruments of destruction and stuff like that. Like it was dope, man. Like it was the first time I've ever actually got to like have that aspect. You know what I mean? Like it's one thing to have light tubes; it's a whole another aspect to have light tubes in fantastic designs. No, absolutely. And one thing I was telling Garrett was before this match, everybody was right up on the ring, like they were right there. You oh yeah. Could not between them and the ring and the Florida Athletic Commission actually told you and Jonathan you need to tell these people what to expect and if they're close to the ring you face what was it a ten thousand dollar fine it was something like that and like I am not trying to pay ten thousand dollars so like you know fuck you I'd like to point out can we just uh hold on wait no 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 keep going there's a okay. uh, there's a lovely moment in here where you can see that the referee is completely biased. I have no clue oh, what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. No, no clue what you're talking about. Just a casual kick Like I said earlier, no one likes butt heavy. Hey, I mean, I'm sure there's got to look, look at the referee helping me. Bud Heavy is one half of the real pro wrestling tag team champions, which means he has a partner. So I imagine he has one person who likes him. No, he even left. Yeah, he left. He moved. So then why he doesn't. Want to do <laughs> why do you think Bud came out as the real pro tag team champions? Because <laughs> <laughs> he has no friends. And this is why you don't take so much time, Zach. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, Kevin. That's why you don't take so much time. Look, I'm speaking on behalf of a traditional wrestling fan. Uh-huh. How's that for traditional? How'd you, how's your forearm for traditional, Zach? It's healed. <laughs> Really, because I woke up to the next day with a gash in your arm saying, I have about a hundred of these. I do. I have like, I, they're still healing. Like my knee is still isn't healed. There's something you also have to look at and to tell you how much people hate Bud is watch the security. When Zach comes up, we don't have them interfere that much. When Bud comes up, they have to get in the plane. Yeah. Ah, oh, my bag of fuckery. That's literally what it's called. And we it's have like, the first. We have the first color of the night, and I promise you that is not the only color of the night. just as vicious as any light you. I think I have an idea what they are too. Kind of the same thing. Can we go ahead and give a shout out to the Chicago Boys Bar and Grill really quick for allowing you to do this craziness? <laughs> Courtney is amazing. So funny thing, Courtney looks at me and she goes, I don't like blood. I go, really? She goes, yeah, at the sight of it, I faint. And I go, okay, well, just so you know, this is a thing. And she's like, I'll, I'll be fine. It'll be fine. Courtney had to run out of the venue and throw up in the back to come back and be like, okay, I'm all right. And I want to go and say one thing because I know this is going to be one of the comments left on the video the gloves that Garrett is wearing those were actually given 
by the Athletic Commission because of everything used in this match. Latex gloves were not okay. With the COVID outbreak, with everything else that's going on, they wanted to make sure that he had gloves that were not going to rip or tear or anything like that. So these were at, these were the only gloves we can get approved by the Athletic Commission. Mm-hmm. Because we normally do – normally you see the ones with the baseball gloves, and, like, baseball gloves aren't thick. Like, those will at least protect you. So he looked yeah. like a gardener. It's fine. Yeah, because the original yeah, exactly the original manifest given to the athletic commission and sent out for approval when you when you sent out the match card, there was a long list of things that could possibly happen in this match, and there was an even bigger checklist that you had to meet. Obviously, you know, in 2019, maybe not that bad, but in 2020, living with COVID, you had to meet, the, you had to meet these demands. Or like mm-hmm. I said, we don't have ten thousand dollars to just fork over. No, not at all. One day, but not today. <laughs> what is this, Vinnie Mac? Absolutely not. <laughs> I would. I mean, you've got people standing on the tables. People are on the tables. People are in the bar. People. People are everywhere. I'm so happy nobody like got in the middle of like the casualty of war. You know what I mean? Look at that guy. He's just like I believe in you. Oh fuck you! It, it's very important that that we tell everybody if one person would have gotten injured that wasn't you know booked as a wrestler, your license could have been pulled immediately by the state of Florida. This is why we get the insurance. <laughs> Zach, what is wrong with you? I wasn't hugged enough as a child or something. I'm, I'm not sure. That excuse. <laughs> okay, I was hugged too much as a child. Oh, by the way, I, I failed. Did to he mention- just spank me? <laughs> when I announced Zach, when I announced Zach, and I took my shirt off, and I was wearing his shirt. That loudest pop in the room was Zach's mother, who was the loudest fan in the building. <laughs> so, the other videos that I've seen of this are like next to my mother and the entire time she's telling everybody I didn't raise him like this. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but even she disliked Bud so much that she was just that's her right there. Shout out to Zach's mom. This is, mm-hmm. this is not a match where you want to be caught slipping Gordon. Uh, I mean that's what four referees out here for this match? Yeah and like yep. we're not even halfway through. Like that's the crazy part. Finally, Monster. <laughs> but heavy stock in his opponent. In Something way. stupid's about to happen. I just Why don't remember stop? what. Um, well, if anybody match. can, uh, <laughs> if anybody caught what was sitting in the corner, I'm sure they've already put the pieces together. Yeah. He got here. What's going on here? Oh. That big NZ. <laughs> I look like I had an idea right here. You know, I wonder if as a paid sponsor they'll allow us to use some of these as weapons because they're pretty heavy. So, fun fact, like, I look at the crowd and I ask them, like, you know, well, I tell them, I'm like, you guys had Jesus earlier. Do you motherfuckers want Satan? And see, so, this, is where I, this is where I go to when I say that the heat going into this match, for you to sit at home and construct that, light tubes don't come that way. You have to make that. <laughs> Like, you show me a light tube at Lowe's that comes that way. <laughs> How long did it take you to do that? I didn't make that. Well, whoever did it, pretty sure it wasn't that easy to make. I'm pretty sure they busted a couple light tubes. Oh, 
Monster stops him. There's that big show, Tay, that Juice and Lunder. Nope. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Now, obviously, that hurt him, but how bad did that hurt you? I don't know. I look fine. I'm chilling. I mean, there's a few shiny parts on your head. Stinging my skin. Oh, my God. I am picking. You know, I. I don't know. I don't know anymore. And at no point in this match, because a lot worse is about to come, at no point in this match, you never thought to yourself, maybe I should not do this to this person. Uh, I think this is, answers your next question. And we will have Bud Heavy on the show, and I'll ask him the same thing for some of the things he'd done to you. Yeah. No. No regard. That's all Legos. That okay, so I call that my bag of fuckery. That is Legos, thumbtacks, seashells, army men, metal jacks, and uh Hot Wheels cars. Just nothing pleasant. Nope. I just need to know that I got home after the show, went to take a shower and pulled three packs out of my leg. There was like eight of them in my shoe. Well, that backfired, Zach. My bag of fuckery sometimes does not work for me. <laughs> Very nice leopard underpants for a bit by Is that who are these guys? What's going on here? I, I don't know. That that is definitely a Dollar General shopping cart. <laughs> That's a whole ass shopping cart, guys. Okay, question of the hour: shopping cart or buggy? Which one is it? That's a shopping cart. Although, if you ask my mother, she calls it a carriage. I don't blame him anyway. Our friend Piers Austin does the same thing. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We might actually have it. Whoa. Uh, See that? I think you can say some of those words on TV. <laughs> the commentary. I did not appreciate wow. having the microphone thrown at wow. me. <laughs> I don't think anybody appreciated him using the microphone. Fuck that sign. Right here. Yes, if you notice the guy in the white hat who's walking off screen, he was just in the corner. He's one of the security guards who actually had to go remove a guy from trying to rush the ring. The guy, the people in the background, they're watching it happen right now. They're and literally removing him. And here's Bud instigating it. Making it worse on everybody. There's a difference between getting heat and being a dick. Talking about the fish shots. Hmm. That is a whole ass shopping cart, ladies and gentlemen. That is a whole ass shopping cart, dude. This is Zach's element for sure. Oh, yeah. This looks like my element. Like you said, they have had these battles. Oh, yeah. Drop some. Broken rib, Zach? On that cart. You know, I think that's what pregnancy feels like, Kevin. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> In that case, I'm glad I'm a dude. <laughs> like, like, have you ever seen that one meme where it has like the one white girl sitting on the couch and she's surrounded by people in the background? That's how I felt right there. I was that little white girl. That's saying you like there. I don't know who brings a shopping cart to a ring. Like, really, some random people. That wasn't my idea. There's, there's a steel chair. There's a lawn chair. The 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 fold up lawn chairs. Oh, okay. oh, so Bud brought his entire house to to have a fight. That's cool. 
Uh, I don't think that's you know, I'm going to have Bud on the show very soon, and I'm trying to remain neutral. Um, but I do want to preface that I was hit in the face with a microphone during this match. And I'm just the ring announcer. I'm not even a sanctioned competitor yet. Keyword being yet. Bud just got hit in the face with my knee, so, he, you know. Ooh. Delayed suplex onto the shopping cart. Ah, that brain buster is my specialty, Bubba. So the entire time that, like, I'm beating on the mat, I'm just looking for an open spot so I don't have to pull thumbtacks out of my hand. Fun, fun times. Fantastic. A steel shopping cart, but heavy spine has to be. Just to assure, when I went and checked on Bud, I was like, Do you want to continue with you? Look me in your face and said, Look you. In true Bud heavy fashion. Do you want to continue? That's when you should have looked at him and just been like, That's not an answer. <laughs> You know, I originally thought of having this watch along with you and Bud Heavy, um, but I was advised very strongly against that by numerous people. <laughs> it's probably best. We wouldn't have made it through. We wouldn't have. We wouldn't have made it this far. Oop. Nope. Bop. Look, he's a slide. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Zach, <laughs> you are a whole ass man. You stand <laughs> six foot five, 250 pounds. You are the tallest man on your roster, and you're hitting a baby cutter. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Everybody else is hitting normal size cutters, so like, goes, goes for the cover. come on. Take out from heavy. <laughs> so right there, I'm using a Lego to pull the thumbtack out of my shoe. <laughs> Worst feeling in the entire universe is to have a thumbtack stuck in your shoe. So this could be actually something that is actually giving him pumping a Oh. There's the skewers. He's got those skewer sticks. You know, normal people when they're in a wrestling match, a headlock is their go-to, a suplex is their go-to. Your go-to has always been wooden skewers. I love them. I love them. I don't know why I love them. We don't want to be doing this at home or school or anywhere else. They shouldn't even be doing this here. I'm surprised that we're even allowed to do this. This is the one point I realized Bud actually might have a conscious. Because if you watch, you can grab him. It's cool. I'm just going to lay here. It's fine. I will say, Zach, you play possum better than anybody I've ever known. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm not, trying to give, I'm not trying to foreshadow or give anything away here, but you play a deadly possum. I play. I just I don't want to get hit anymore. That's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm like, if I lay here, it's the it's the bear technique, bro. If you see a bear in the woods, jump in and help the bear. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it's the if you see a bear, if you're ever in a fight with a bear. Lay down and pretend you're dead. They'll just go away. That's always been my premises. <laughs> did you just compliment Bud Heavy? No. no. I think you did. I think no. you did. Blow on the top rope. He's biting me. Oh boy. Oh boy. See, a real man would have used all of them. You see that? Okay, you see the crushes come through. You go, Dad. I don't want to be that mean. They're sticking out of its forehead, Jordan. Oh no. Off the top, two, the light bulbs up the stop side, monster off the top, skewers in head. Oh. 
That's what that looked like on camera. Yes, he said it. He 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 said what you think he said. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is the war zone. Diving headbutt. Now who's this guy? Look. Hi, Gary. <laughs> Just jumped. Where did you come from? I was like, what, what are you doing? What did I do to you? What 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 did I do to you? And it's just one after another. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Jordan, I just saw a the I've never seen so many willing people or, or so many people willing to get into a ring covered in glass, thumbtacks, and Legos. Yeah, no, these people are there. Right. Something's not right with them. Oh, no, they're, they're still getting a lot of them. Ooh, what's that? I didn't even see that. What is this? Hey, he can only watch at this point, Jordan. This is just out of control. Absolutely out of control. Where did I go? Uh, uh, hardcore. Zach, you're I laying underneath the bottom rope. Right there's your foot. Okay. That's a chair with light tubes, Jordan. That's a chair with light tubes. Oh, my God. So, this guy's known as the Brooklyn Juggernaut, correct? Is he out there because he's a fan of you, or he just despises Bud Heavy? I'm not 100% sure at this point. I don't know. At this point, I don't have answers. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's a that's a whole ass man. That's a whole ass two men. I, I want to say earlier that or earlier in the night, the two big gentlemen you see there damn near broke your ring. <laughs> Did he just hit him in the face with a bag? Yes. He just said nope. Ray is a pretty pretty large man as well, and Ruby is small. <laughs> and he just knocked him into oblivion with a suitcase. I think I'm still pulling glass on my face at this point. And this is what I was referring to when I thought we were going to have to call the match. I was just sitting by waiting for it. But then I remembered it was a hardcore match, so hey, let it go. Security guard goes down. I'm just chilling in the corner. Wrestlers trading chops. What is going on? There's Alex. Oh, there's Remy. I looked up at one point and I was just like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> How talented is Remy? Amazing, dude. It's a wonder he's not on one of the major promotions. Mm -hmm. That's not anything away from anybody else. He just there, is there anything that Remy can't do? Remy's the one in the black trunks, ladies and gentlemen. I want to work, Remy. And his partner Alex Todd's no slouch either. Let's do it, Jordan. Everybody else is. <laughs> But heavy right next to me, bleeding profusely. Cuts is but heavy bleeding profusely? I don't even know what's happening at this point. He he, I don't know if it happened already, but I know by the time the match was over, he was definitely covered. Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's got good color. Mind you, he's still three blind. Yeah, his hair used to be blonde. Now it's strawberry blonde. Ah, uh, the old bar trade-off. 
Is Garrett back in the ring? He is. Yeah, he yeah, decided to come back on vacation. I got most of the black eye I'll tell you that come back. Barely, you know, they're on those chairs. They're slumped into the chairs. Oh God! Is that? Oh. Ooh. Oh, kick to the face. Knocks me out of his chair. Oh man. <laughs> That's my mother, and she's like in this, in this right now. And I'm like, nope, I'm not done. <laughs> this has already got way past. Oh what my is god! I wish you would end it already. Smiling right now. She was just looking right at me, smiling. I can't believe it. These guys are disgustingly sick, and I'm loving every second of it. Jesus. <laughs> I'm loving every second of it. Good luck to their families. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that's a. I'll give it to him. That's a. That's a cool picture. <laughs> like. I wonder how he ended up like that. That's a good question. How many light tubes were broken in this match? Uh. That is a good question. Star was, Star was five. From there, it went to the... The stop sign had like six or seven. Forearm was one. There's five. So it's six. Uh, stop sign had five on it. The chair had four. That thing had a couple. There was... Can we just call it somewhere between a shitload and a fuck ton? Yeah, let's go with that. Oh, is this where he hit me in the dick? Punch. He hit me with that old trusty Ric Flair. You see that? I don't know what happened right here. I'm going to be honest with you. At one point, I'm looking at a table. The second I'm like the next, I'm not. And the table doesn't break. No. That had to be stiff. Yeah, that was great. That was fantastic. Uh, stiff table into a bottom springboard bud heavy. Yeah, that was great. It was fantastic. The champion is not looking good, Zach Monstar. Well, not it's not going to break from a firm like that. Especially Zach. <laughs> That table was so bad, dude. This yeah. is like my first time like seeing it back, so I'm like cover. One, two, kick out. <laughs> Did you see Garrett like, I'm sorry, dude. I'm so sorry, bud. <laughs> like it's only two. <laughs> bud, like, please stay over three, please. Yeah, Thank Jordan. Zach is, I know Zach thrives on this environment. I will say Garrett sells. Just absolutely devastating. Well, it's not even selling. It's his reactions are priceless. At least he can say, hey, you should see the other guy. Man, that, oh, split leg in the corner, butt heavy. Trying to hang on. I learned that from watching Samoa Joe. Just walk away. <laughs> Arms back. Legs up in the air. Monster stopping him. Monster oh, this is where bad shit happens. He's got Legos matted in his hair. Like <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Another one. You see where it just goes into straight, just like... Stiff shots? Yeah. 
lifting them up on the top. What are they going to do now, Jordan? I'm a little concerned right here. See, the first one that that made me wonder, was it a receipt? Were you guys working? I don't know. Is that first headbutt you did? Monster. Trapped. Oh, boy. Violence party. Super kick. Knee. I wish they would have caught that knee because that knee rocked his jaw. That mm-hmm. hook kick, though. But you you know you put extra you put some extra salt on that knee. I'm worn out, Jordan. I put everything on my knees. To include I'll his butt jaw. I'll I'll get butt it. He, every time I asked him if he wanted to quit, that man never wanted to quit. No, he just kept telling you to fuck off. Basically. I don't, see, I don't see any signs of them stopping at any time soon. You just see my brain working, and, like, that's the scary part. Monster setting heavy up again. What the, uh, he's got, he, he's got oh, those like, thinking. He's back of the head shots were ridiculous. Heavy in the back of the head. Monster going nuts. Heavy in the back of the head. Heavy in the back of the head. Oh, I just want to go ahead and say, in the UFC, back of the head shots are illegal for a reason. How's this for a double stomp, Kevin? The fact that they did break. I know, like the one time that like the light tubes are made out of steel. Well, you know, people look at it when they don't break and they go, oh, that was a botch. I mean, yeah, kind of. You want that explosion effect, but if they didn't break... That means there was no give, and they took the full force of that blow. At least mm-hmm. if it breaks, you go through it, it slows you down, it, it stops some of your momentum. But like the table earlier in that light tube, when they don't break, you pretty much just hit concrete. Yeah. Consider it like uh, like doing a belly flop into a pool off of a house. It, you just stop. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. Jesus. I pulled a shard of glass out of my knee pad that looked like that. And it was just sticking out. Which gave me the idea of actually getting knee pads and putting glass through it so I can just put it on there and yeah. So guys, this was the first <laughs> look. This is the first time that match has been aired. If you didn't see it live, this is the first time it was available. Um, we're going to talk about it briefly before we get out of here. But before we get into that, I do want to take a chance to thank our amazing sponsors. Again, guys, the coldest water, the link is in the description. There are 15 random people will be receiving a free bottle. All you have to do is is use the link in the description, the coldest 60 giveaway link to register for your chance to win an absolute free one. And if you want to score any of their amazing products, like their coffee, their t-shirts, their water bottles, their athletic wear, make sure you use promo code wrestling at checkout to save 10%. That's promo code wrestling at checkout to save 10%. With that being said, Zach, obviously during the match, your adrenaline's going, I mean, Obviously, you feel everything, but some things are numbed a little bit due to the adrenaline and just the fast pace of the match. After the match is over, me and Garrett were talking about this. I, you told me to come into the locker room. I said I, I, I don't want to. I'm not a, I'm not a wrestler for you guys yet. That's not my zone. I was pulled into the locker room after it was over because you and him were still fighting in the back. Was was there something said, or did you feel like there, it just wasn't? Because I wasn't there at the beginning of it. Was there something said, or did you just feel that it wasn't over? It's it's never over. It's never going to be over. Honestly, what happened was I heard Bud talking to the camera, saying that he's not done, and it's this and it's that. And uh, I was like, "Fuck it, let's go right now." I will never turn down the the opportunity to fight somebody, man. I won't do it. Okay, but that that leads me to ask this question. Your next event, January 16th, mm-hmm. Chicago Bar and Grill, mm-hmm. Fort Myers, Florida. 
Uh-huh. The Real Pro Wrestling Hardcore Championship is on the line. Zach uh-huh. Monstar is the defending champion. Bud Heavy is not the challenger. So if you're ready to go at any time, why isn't this match with Bud Heavy? Because I didn't make the match, man. Uh, realistically, Boone has been undefeated since making his debut in Real Pro since 2018. Oh. And when given the opportunity to go after a title, he said, I want the hardcore championship. Could have picked any title, any title. But he wants my title. Now, I'm going to be honest, man. Boone's not a hardcore boy. Garrett's been around long enough. He can tell you. Boone, he's never, I've never seen Boone do hardcore. Nope. So he's going to test his, he's going to test the waters again. With the with the great white shark of of real pro wrestling, I can't it's, help that these boys were dropped on their head. I'm just going to do it again. It's definitely going to be an amazing match to to be there and witness. Um, you and Bud he- Bud Heavy's also scheduled to be on the card. You guys are going to be in the same building again. I'm not sure how that's going to go down, but I'll be there. Garrett's going to be there. Zach's going to be there. Um, but well, one thing I do. One thing I do want to hint on, um, and I'm not going to give away too much, um, at the January 16th show, uh, Fort Myers, Florida, Chicago Boys Bar and Grill, Real Pro Wrestling will be unveiling their brand new women's championship. Yes, sir. Listen to what I said. The women's championship. This is not a Divas title. This is not a Bombshells title. This is not a Knockouts title. We are... Well, I say we, but I'll be announcing it. Zach, you partners, you have decided to incorporate a new women's championship moving forward. You'll be crowning the brand new women's champion. It's vacant right now. Mm-hmm. And moving forward, it is going to be a fantastic division. You have two very amazing competitors set up to compete for that title, one of which was our guest last week, Kelsey Reagan. Very mm-hmm. excited to see how that match is going to go down. I'll be there to call every, every second of it. But – um. You specifically told me when you when you wanted to make this title, it was going to be a women's championship. Mm-hmm. Why women's over divas, knockouts, or bombshell? Because bombshell, diva, knockout—they're all cute little fun names that you can call women who want to be professional wrestlers. At the end of the day, the girls, the the women that are that are on Real Pro. I don't see them as just girls. I don't I don't see them as as divas who are scared to break a nail. I see them as equals. That they are willing to go out there and put just as much heart and soul and passion in and everything that they're doing as I am, as the boys are. So in real pro, women are equals and that's why they are the women's championship. Now I know the I know the card is not set yet. Um, Zach, you are one of the oh, you're the majority owner of Real Pro Wrestling, um, so maybe we have a little inside card here to play. But Garrett, you being the senior official in, in a moment as big as this, I can't imagine it going to anybody other than you to call the match. But it might. There, there's people who've been there just as long as you have. People who can call it just as well as you can. Um, Zach, is Garrett going to be the one calling the match? Yes. Okay, so Garrett, you being the senior official calling this match, stepping forward into this new era of women's wrestling for real pro, that's got to feel pretty good for you to be the official that's going to call this, crown the new champion, and really set the pace for what women's wrestling has become and breaking away from what it was. So with the women's division coming up, is I really think they're going to build. It's going to be a great division. Um, It's set you know, being a part of it is just an honor. But the thing about it is there are women on that card that I feel could could compete with some of these men. There's women that will be on our roster and will be challenging for the title and will be, you know. I mean, last week we had on one call out for death match. Mm-hmm. Which is weird because, like, Wrestling is adapting so much, man. And and these girl, these women, I keep saying girls, and I don't mean to, but like these women, they they want to be seen as equals. 
Mm -hmm. So when you have somebody like Kelsey Reagan uh, or, or Reagan fire, it's the battle of Reagan's I know, but you have, you have these two individuals who want to be so much more than just uh, the girls match. You know what I mean? They want to be they want to be the show stealer. They want to have match of the night and like that. That's what I want. That's what I look for when it comes to real pro, man. I see uh, these other companies are like, oh, you have to kind of take a backseat to like the TV guys that they're bringing in or you have to take a backseat to the main event. And like, nah, I'm sorry. Like if your main event can't hold like a candle or it can't match the level that two two women are bringing to the table at their full potential or what what two dudes that you've never seen before are doing out there or a tag team match that that nobody has seen before with all fresh faces if your main event can't withstand that then maybe you should pick a better main event maybe you should have booked your card a little bit better like that's how it is at the end of the day no, I absolutely agree. Um, this this episode of the forum was to do a watch along with the Chicago Street Fight slash Death Match that was Zach versus Bud Heavy. But that that moment is going to be so huge, you know, moving mm-hmm. forward with your women's division. We had we had to talk about it. It, it deserves every bit of the spotlight we're going to put on it. They're going to have an amazing showcase January 16th, Fort Myers, Florida, Chicago Boys Bar and Grill. If you guys are local, if you're willing to make the trip, please come out and see us. Uh, we'd mm-hmm. love to talk to each and every one of you. Um, All the titles are on the line in January. My so- hardcore title, the top crown, the coastal, the women's, and the tag are all on the line. So just before we get out of here, I have one more question for you, Zach. Now you said when you guys walked into the back that that Bud looked into the camera and said it wasn't over. Obviously, there wasn't time for talk. You guys were pulled apart and you left the arena short or not the arena, but you left the bar shortly after. I'm going to be interviewing Bud Heavy on the show very soon. If there was one thing for you to say in retort to his comment, and I'm going to clip this, I'm going to show it on that interview. Uh, just, just full disclosure. Whatever you say, I am going to show him on the next interview that I have him on. What would you like to say to Bud in retort to him saying it's not over? You're right, Bud. It's not over. As long as you are breathing, it won't be over. Don't make any mistake about it. Hardcore division, real pro wrestling, madhouse over everything. Guys, this has been this week's episode of The War Room, the watch-along of the Chicago Street Fight with the senior official, Garrett, with the hardcore champion himself, Zach. We thank you guys for watching. Uh, Like I said, this was pre-recorded because I had a storm coming through. Uh, Next week, we will be live all over again. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you to our sponsors, The Coldest Water, at thecoldestwater.com. Make sure you register for their free giveaway. Link is in the description. And also use promo code WRESTLING at checkout to save 10%. Make sure you go to A-Rock Designs on Facebook to order any custom merchandise you guys would like to uh, get your hands on. And lastly, guys, go to storefrontier.com slash wrestling review society that is storefrontier.com slash wrestling review society to get your merch today like our brand new wrs club shirt uh that we do have available and you might just see the three of us rocking these shirts at the next show who knows but with that being said guys thank you so much for watching we'll be live next week and um i I get the feeling that this whole thing with zach and bud we're going to be here watching another match uh very very soon and i will have bud heavy on to get side of the events and also coming up in january we will be interviewing jake the snake roberts that is right jake the snake will be live in the war room at the end of january so make sure you sub to the youtube channel and hit that bell to get notified every single time we go live thanks guys and we'll see you next time